In this lesson, you'll learn about stress in very long English words. Before we get started, Ethan and Ivy would like to pronounce some of our longest words for you. Long words. Like phloxinoxinihopilification, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and pseudosupo, pseudo-pseudo-hypoparathyroidism. We're going to do phloxinoxinihopilification and supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. The words you've just heard are more of a curiosity than anything, and you will not have reason to use them other than to impress your friends and English teachers. Most of them have been made up as an exercise in creating long words. Words with more than five syllables are fairly uncommon in English, and you will rarely need to pronounce one. I looked up six seven and eight syllable words on the internet and found very few that I would ever use. You may occasionally use six syllable words like responsibility, beneficiary, extraterrestrial, or biotechnology. Words longer than that are rarely used outside the medical or scientific fields. However, if you are in one of those fields, you may use long words much more than the average person. So how do natives, even children, know how to pronounce really long words? We do it intuitively. As native speakers, our brains have stored thousands of words. And when we come across new, unfamiliar words, the brain automatically applies the patterns found in similar words to these new words to guess the pronunciation. Now, you've probably always been told how difficult English is and that there are so many inconsistencies and spelling and pronunciation are just impossible. Well, that's really not true once you explore it a little bit further. There's a lot of predictability. Did you notice that was a six-syllable word? This is a great place to start the lesson. Let's take a look in detail at the word predictability. First, it's important to realize that longer words are formed by combining root words, prefixes, and suffixes. You may find multiple recognizable roots, prefixes, and suffixes within a word. If you haven't already, please watch my video on how to pronounce long English words. You'll find it helpful to understand the concepts of prefixes, suffixes, and root words. So when you look at the word predictability, you may see two words you recognize. Predict and ability. If you look more closely, you find the prefix pre, meaning before, the root word dict, meaning say, a bill or able, and the suffix ity, which makes the word a noun. So if you put all of these parts together, you see that this word means the ability to say before or basically being able to predict something or tell what will happen in the future. To determine how to pronounce this word, first break it down into syllables and then look at the end of the word to determine where the primary stress is. You may also want to watch my video, How to Stress English Words, for more detailed information on the concept of word stress. Now, as you've learned from the previous video, words ending in the majority of suffixes stress the syllable just before the suffix ending. The suffix ity follows this common pattern. So you know the word ability has the primary stress on the syllable bill because it's the syllable just before the suffix. Now let's look at the first part of the word, predict. Do you recognize the prefix pre? It's a really common one in English. 
Prefixes in English are usually not stressed. Additionally, two-syllable English verbs are often stressed on the second part. So you pronounce this word predict. If you put the whole word back together again, you have predictability. Notice the stress pattern, predictability. The syllable just before the prefix has primary stress. And the second syllable, dict, has a secondary stress. Note that words longer than three syllables will generally have a secondary stress. You will hear the secondary stress syllable clearly, loud and long, but not quite as long as the primary stress syllable. Listen again. Predictability. Predictability. Did you hear the extra emphasis on bill? So do you think you can tackle supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Let's go ahead and give it a try. First, break it into syllables. Then look at the ending. This one ends in the suffix C-I-O-U-S, which is one of the common ones where primary stress will fall just before the suffix. So you know primary stress for this word will be on do. Then go back through the word and look for words you recognize. I see super and fragile immediately. Both of these words stress the first syllable. Super, fragile. By the way, when in doubt as to how to stress a two-syllable word, it's usually on the first syllable, unless it's a verb. So let's go through this long word now and break it into parts. Most of it will break into two-syllable chunks with the stress on the first part of each. For example, super, cala, fragile, and then we can go through the whole thing that way. Super, cala, fragile, listic, expi, ala, docious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Are you noticing the pattern now? Did you notice that there's only one primary stress syllable on the second to the last syllable and several secondary stress syllables? Now here's a challenge for you and I will be really impressed if you can do this. Post a link in the comments section below of an audio or video clip of you pronouncing these three really long words. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, pseudo-pseudo-hypoparathyroidism, and phloxanasa nihilpilification. Thanks for watching!